Hey, it's Mike from Hillside Hives. I thought today we'd just do a quick video um, just showing you how I'm prepping for winter. I'm actually not prepping for winter, prepping more for fall for them to build up their stores for winter. Um, I started feeding two to one solution and I have chosen to feed inside every hive. I'll show you my system that I use. Um, it's really kind of nice because you don't have to disturb the bees and I use my feeding system as like an inner cover, uh, top entrance, and the feeder. So I just want to pop in because I fed them two days ago and they're kind of really hungry. I mean, there's bees everywhere. They're just looking for food now that it's getting cooler here in New England. Um, so we can kind of peek over here. Let's take a look. I told my one friend I was going to compare a drone with a regular bee. And do you think I can get a drone? I, there was a ton of them here the other day and now I can't find any of them. Okay, let's take a look inside here. So you'll see here, this is the hive. If you were following me on Facebook on my Hillside Hives page, this was the hive I opened up. And wouldn't you know it, I broke honey. There's a little honey that was between these two boxes and it broke open. And I had robbers from all these hives come piling on here. And of course my smoker breaks and I don't have smoke. I can't smoke them out. It was a cluster. So I am not going into these hives just yet until um, it gets a lot colder. I'm not gonna harvest my honey probably for another month yet, which kind of frustrates me. I wanted to harvest some of it now. I'm not gonna have as much to harvest as I did last year because I didn't have great producers this year in all these hives. Um, so it is what it is, right? I do wanna show you one thing that I did when it was really hot this summer and it worked out very well. As you can see, I have upper entrance right here on this inner cover. And this is the feeding system I'll show you in a second. I drilled in two holes here for um, upper entrance. And when it was really hot, I drilled a hole in the middle of this hive here, which I will just plug up for the winter. Um, if I don't take this, this might be my honey that I take for, the, uh, for me. Um, but this worked out really well. And I'll show you over here on this one. Look at these two little guard bees in here. Oh, that's a great picture. See them right there? Those are guard bees. They're guarding that little entrance. I did the same on this entrance too. She's like, what are you doing? Here they come, here comes her sister saying we might be attacked here. I'm gonna get back because I don't have my suit on. Uh, upper entrance and I have another um, guard area. I don't poop here, I have to think about that. Um, so let's just take a look here. Let's see how much they're, they're not really eating much. Now see, I have a problem with this. I gotta fix it because look at the bees that got up in here. Oh, that's why, look at it. It's not fastened enough. So the bees are getting up. But you can see my feed system right here. This is gonna be for my pollen patty down here. Um, two to one sugar solution. There's, um, it's like a essential oil blend in here too. It's like a honey bee healthy, but essential oils that I made up myself. And I think I have a post in somewhere on my Facebook, Hillside Hives, but about that. But, let's see, there's a guard bee right around me. She says, get away from me, Mike. I, I'm, I, this, uh, I have a better system that I've worked. It's the same system, but I have handles on there so they can come up. Um, but basically, these come out. It's just a little tight right now. I can put pollen patty right here. I can put uh, feed here. I have another round hole if I want to put another feed. And it's their upper entrance. So I like that system. I didn't invent it. I steal everything from other people's ideas on YouTube. So I can just put that back on. I just am checking because like I said I fed in every hive and I want to make sure that they have enough because again I'm having bees flying up to my house going actually in my car because there's wax in my car and I have a ton of bees in my car because I had my windows I left open um, because they're looking for resources now. It's um, almost October, it's end of September, so we don't we have very limited resources around here. We have a lot of bees that are probably gonna be dying off in the next couple of weeks, and they're just looking for something to do, so they're looking for honey, or looking for nectar, looking for pollen. It's just not as much out there right now, so. But they're not eating as much as I thought they were going to be, so I'm not gonna check every hive, I just am gonna check some of my, this is my big hive, so I just wanted to check that one, but I wanted to show you my system and kind of tell you what I'm doing. I have um, these big things that I'd made a long time ago, these two garden trellises right here. Um, I'm gonna somehow put them up because I need to protect this side of my hives better this year because uh, our storms come from this way. So 
I need to protect the front of the hives a little bit better. So I'm going to use those two big garden trellises in front of this section down here and then uh, put something up like a piece of plywood that would kind of block the storms that were coming in um, from getting into the and another all the stuff would be coming in like the snow and the sleet wouldn't be coming into the entrances I'm also going to ventilate very well on the top this is going to be a perfect example I'm going to keep this ventilation system on the top I'm going to have like a I use wool sweaters and put in there from the second hand store um, that I get and then there's going to have a garden roof on that one too so I'm gonna put more ventilation um, on them this year because I think I had a lot of freezing out from moisture last year, so. And a lot of bees dying because of that. One more thing. This is the, oh, look at this little bugger. Robbing, think about robbing. Get out of there, you bugger. Yellow jackets, they're trying. I put this mouse guard haphazardly on here just to kind of that was my way of trying to prevent robbing. This is a weak hive because remember, this is the swarm. This is a good hive. This is, oh, um, Phoebe is in here. That's a good, that's a good hive. This is a weak one too. This is when I was attacked by a bear. So I'm kind of, see I have it like, reducing their entrance a little bit so it can kind of reduce the robbing. Hopefully, um, the guard bees don't have as much uh, room that they have to guard. Oh, it's busy in Woodsville, New Hampshire today. All right, I think that's it. Russians are doing fair. I'm not as impressed with them, but remember, if you follow me along, they had a rough start. But they were lost in the mail for a week, and I had to nurse them back to health, so I can't expect them to do too much. I thought they would do a little bit better, but um, I don't know. We'll see. The Saskatraz bees down here. That worry hive, I'm going to take one top off of the worry hive and harvest a little bit of that honey just from one of those. I'm going to let the other four remaining for the winter for them. I'm hoping one Saskatraz hive will go to Pennsylvania because I want one of each breed to go to Pennsylvania. Uh, Carniolians are down here. It's just the one hive. Those other um, five frame nukes are just someplace to store. Carniolians are doing really well. I want that hive to go to Pennsylvania as well my Russians, two of my Russians, and two of my Italians. So I really want like six hives to go to Pennsylvania this fall. So we'll see. All right, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed this little tour and talk about feeding. If you have any questions about feeding, I'll show you a little bit more coming up because what I'm doing now is prepping for winter uh, because it is October, so I got to get that ready to go. So I'll show you what I'm going to be doing for winterization once I start that in about another month or so. But otherwise, we'll do these little ones um, until then. All right, thanks. Have a good one.